Hello, my name is the legendary Zoltan, and I am here today to sales pitch a list of JRPGs to the co-author of this YouTube channel, Mel, to play for our podcast called Turn-Based Memories. The format of Turn-Based Memories is that one of us has been a longtime fan of a JRPG and has the other play it for the first time. I have had Mel play Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger, and he was lukewarm on the former and loved the latter. Mel has had me play Super Mario RPG and Shadow Hearts Covenant, and I too was lukewarm on the former and loved the latter. So in this video, I'm going to list 13 RPGs that Mel hasn't played to tell him and you why I recommend them. Feel free to pressure Mel to play your game of choice in the comments section. Here we go, number 13, Star Ocean 3 Till the End of Time. This game is pretty crazy. It's got that Star Ocean action-based combat from Star Ocean 2, but now it's in 3D and it works amazingly well. There are basically two reasons I want to recommend this game. Number one, the crazy battle system is goddamn crazy. You can turn it into a stat game and just level up your parameters with levels and item creation if you want and become a god. Or you can just not care about stats be really good at battling and literally beat bosses without taking damage. Admittedly, your AI companions might die though. I can see that annoying the hell out of you, Mel, but it is possible to set everyone to manual and you control them all by yourself uh, by switching between them instantly a la Final Fantasy VII Remake. Better than Final Fantasy VII Remake, actually, because it is instantaneous. No short pause in between switching between characters to bust up your rhythm. But even more than that, the number two reason, this game has an infamous, the infamous plot twist in all of video games. I'm just dying to hear your reaction. Nearly everyone hates it. I freaking love it. You probably think it's dumb. Number 12, Breath of Fire 3. This is the Capcom RPG where you can turn into a large variety of dragons by picking any combination of three dragon genes from your inventory. Aside from the dragon gene system, we also have the enemy skill learning system, the master system to customize your character parameters and their learned abilities, the fairy, fi the fairy village minigame, and the armor weight slash character speed dynamic. It's turn-based, so it ought to be up your alley, Mel. Number 11, Magic Pen Gel. What? You never even heard of it? This is indeed among the least talked about RPGs. I think it's the very first game that Studio Ghibli ever, ever collaborated on. It's a cute PS2 game where you draw your own Pokemon on a piece of paper. Then it comes to life and fights for you against other sketch monsters in a rock, scissors, paper style combat system. It's pretty insane what they've accomplished here because you can draw anything you want on your flat piece of paper and it will become a living 3D monster with battle animations. The parameters and properties of your monsters depend on the size of its body parts and the colors used. It's freaking genius. Basically, all you do is fight to fight battles to win more colors so you can make bigger monsters. Doesn't that appeal to your creativity? Number 10, Eternal Sonata for the PS3 or Xbox 360. I prefer the PS3 version because it's harder and it has more characters. The game is developed by Tri Crescendo and it's one of the most solid grinds out there. You don't have to fight tons of battles if you don't want to, but if you do, it will very noticeably increase the number of mistakes you can make in boss battles. Just like in Super Mario RPG, you have to block enemy attacks with timed button presses. Fail to block too many attacks and you'll end up like Chopin. Dead. This game has the Psycho Babble story. I seriously never know what they're talking about. But if you can get past that, you'll be in for a treat. It's got a unique battle system where positioning and when to use what combo really matter. It has the best PS3 graphics I have ever seen. 
and it takes full advantages of those advantage of those sweet graphics with pre-programmed camera angles. Hell yeah. And it may have the best treasure chest contents of any JRPG I have ever played. Number 9, Radiata Stories. This is a PS2 Tri-Ace game. I honestly can't remember much about the combat. It's full action, and I remember going into battles with four people, walking up to the south side of an enemy, pressing a formation button to make the other three guys instantly move to the northeast and west sides of that same enemy to completely surround it, and pummeling it into the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. It's everything else about this game that really stands out in my memory. For starters, the main character's name, the main character's name is Jack Russell. This is a funny name to me, I don't know why. As Jack Russell, you literally walk around and kick people in the shins. You also kick open treasure chests. You also kick anything you see in the environment and it actually like moves when you kick it. You can also challenge and defeat any story character and shopkeeper you see by kicking them in the shins as Jack Russell. And of course, who could forget that there are over 150 recruitable characters. What can I say, Mel? It's another unique Tri-Ace game. Number 8, Atelier Rorona. This is on PS3 and PS4. Mel, you need to play this for reasons that I have already mentioned to you. It's a long-running series that totally looks like it is being marketed to young girls with all its cutesy characters, its simple battle mechanics, its good-looking boys, its non-violent story about running an item shop, and its style female vocal opening songs. Only girls like that kind of music. It turns out that it has all that stuff and multiple endings that reflect the things you did to make your shop successful. That's cool. A deep crafting system that is the focus of the game and an unbelievably strict set of deadlines by which you must make all the items requested of you. I was surprised at how hardcore of an RPG Atelier Rorona turned out to be. Number seven, Final Fantasy Tactics. The strategy RPG that made the genre famous. Mel, you love Final Fantasy XII and its lore. And this is an example of a game that you get when you let Yasumi Matsuno have full reign. It's only one of the greatest uses of the Final Fantasy job system ever. It's only the biggest and most complex Final Fantasy story available. It's only every battle that feels as epic as a boss battle. The customization is so deep in this game. You'll definitely like it, Mel. When you start the game, fire everyone in your party and create new soldiers from scratch so you can name them all. Make sure you name at least one of them Zoltan. Number six, Valkyrie Profile, one and or two. I would be stoked if you played Valkyrie Profile 1 and loved it so much that you then wanted to play 2 as well. Valkyrie Profile is the best Tri-Ace franchise. Valkyrie Profile 1 will introduce you to its insane battle mechanics, Motoi Sakuraba's best dungeon music, and one of the most creative and dramatic story formats. The downfall is that you need a guide to figure out how to get the A ending. And all of the story is in the A ending. Valkyrie Profile 2, on the other hand, doesn't require any guides. And the combat has been dramatically improved. Mel, I'm going to tell you right now. My Valkyrie Profile 2 is my favorite combat system of all time. The only downside to this game is that it doesn't utilize the dramatic story format of the original. You got to play some Valkyrie Profile, man! Number 5, Act Razor. 
This is not an RPG at all, but it's one of those games that RPG, RPG fans often like. It's an SNES game, and the first game by Quintet. It's the first half town building, half something else game. There have been several since then, and some of them were directly inspired by ActRaiser. It takes a while to get used to the physics of the action stages. It's a total slash fest, but the town building is relaxing, and the music is god tier. It's only a 10 hour game, so check it out, Mel. Number four, Star Ocean 2. This game is absolutely bonkers. You have to play this one without a guide because this is a game that is really about finding things. This is on PS1. It's a pseudo open world JRPG. The game grants a lot of freedom. There aren't many, but thou must moments in this game. You can decide nearly everything yourself. I would say that at least a third of this game's content is optional and completely missable. The massive skill menu could have you unlocking brand new things to try out all the way until the end of the game. Also, it's only about 35 hours, so while, it's, while it is huge, it's not long. I would love to just make a big list of all the different things you can do in this game, but I should leave that up to you when you play it. This game was so ambitious that it must be a miracle that it turned out as well as it did. It's the first Tri-Ace game that came to the West. It's too crazy to miss, Mel. Number three, Brave Fencer Musashi. This game is more of a 3D Zelda clone than an RPG. How can I sell this one to you, Mel? All the good guys are named after food, and all the bad guys are named after drinks. It must be genius. The soundtrack has no repeated songs ever. It has funny voice acting. You dual wield a little sword and a big sword. It has a few really nice puzzles and a few really hard platforming bits. It has a day and night cycle. It has a gauge akin to a fatigue gauge. And when it gets up to 80%, you just fall asleep right where you are. I would argue that the main appeal of Brave Fencer Musashi is searching all over the world to the great soundtrack for all 40 of the kidnapped castle staff and conquering the challenging dungeons. Number two, Xenogears. This has got to be in the middle of your warehouse, Mel. It's an old school turn-based RPG by the same guy who made the Xenosaga series. But the crazy thing is that it has about as much story in it as all three Xenosaga games combined. This is actually what Xenosaga Episode 5 was supposed to be. The regular battles are pretty simple. You just use different combinations of weak, medium, and strong attacks, and dudes die. The mech versus mech boss battles, on the other hand, are more like puzzles. After enough playthroughs, you know what to do, and you can do it easily, even at low levels. But the first time, I'd say it's at least as effective as Chrono Trigger in making you panic because you're not sure why you're doing zero damage. We've got another famous soundtrack from Yasunori Mitsuda, and of course, the best story in all of games. The only series I've ever heard compared to Xenogears in terms of story is the Trails series, which is like a nine game long continuing saga. I've heard this game described as foreshadowing the game. Just be ready to sit down and read a lot of scrolling text, yo. There isn't any voice acting in this game, and all cutscenes are mandatory. And the number one game I want Mel to play. Alundra. Admittedly, I think you might like Xenogears more, but Alundra is objectively one of the best made games out there. It takes the 2D Zelda formula to a whole new level. This game has the exploration appeal of Zelda, but it also has puzzles. Lots of them. Lots and lots of puzzles. Every dungeon 
is just room after room of figuring out how to get to the next room. And at the end, you'll fight a boss, which is far more difficult than in any Zelda game, but nothing on the level of Dark Souls. You are, of course, going to get some great 2D sprite graphics and a great soundtrack by the guy who does music for the One Piece anime. But just for you, Mel, you can finally have Zelda with a dark story. It's about a village full of people who are being attacked through their dreams. So you have to go into their dreams and slay the demons. It's a constant uphill battle, not only to complete each, each dungeon, but also to create peace in the village because everyone's opinion of you changes multiple times throughout the game. I actually enjoyed talking to each character after each story development. I was totally traumatized when I saved a guy and multiple people were angry at me, including the guy who I saved, because of something related to me saving that guy. Traumatized, Mel. I had to write a song all about it just to get over it. There are some sweet spoilers to look forward to, lots of sadness, lots of harsh trials for the player, and lots of beautifully crafted dungeons. Mel, you got to play Alundra. Thank you, everyone, for watching. What you are seeing on the screen now is the entire list of games that I have played and would recommend for Mel to play for the podcast. I've gone through my top 13, but the list has a total of 21, I believe. You can also view this list in the description and in the comment section. Do you have a game on this list that you think Mel needs to play? Put pressure on him in the comment section. I hope Mel makes a video where he tries to sales pitch his game list to me. I hope you had a great time. If you did and you want to help out the channel, press the thumbs up button. This has been the Legendary Zoltan.